I just you know the camera is probably just going to be pointed at me, but I just don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Don't want to do something covert. No, 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 <laughs> certainly not. Yeah, make it part of the document, part of the record. Uh, okay. All right, all right. Let's do the uh, intro here. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ben Busy broadcasting to you from Kyoto, Japan. Uh, today I am joined by none other than uh, Mister In Mendham. Uh, I, I I wouldn't I, I hesitate to say your full name. I don't know if there's like I I just exercise some discretion in that. Um, yeah, I think all labels suck. So <laughs> yeah, the 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 former formerly known as shithead. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll just make a symbol like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. Prince, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Round. Um, a, a little background on in Mendham. Uh, the author, or rather the creator of 3,429 videos at the time of this recording, um, there's only one word to describe that, and that's prolific. Uh, you talk about topics ranging from neuroscience to consciousness studies to religion, uh, some politics. Uh, is, there, is there, would you say that there is a theme uh, 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 throughout all of your videos that you're kind of narrowing in on, is it consciousness? Well, well I'd say the theme is is that it's a reductionist philosophy. Mm. You know, and what you're really doing is that if you look at every thing, single thing out there, human beings have, generally speaking, messed up anything they touch. Mm -hmm. And they've done it with philosophy. They've made everything more complicated than it is, right? The economy's not so complicated. It's a bunch of give and take and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And you've got to see whose pockets are the fullest. And you say, mm -hmm. yeah, quite obviously, they're takers. And the guy mm -hmm. with the empty is the, the, the giver. The guy with the broken mm -hmm. back is the real giver. You know what I'm saying? Right. Kind of, so I'm just saying you can... You can find simple logic and all this stuff. So all this, they've just made everything more complicated. We're basically just bugs, uh, mm -hmm. you know, squirming through this, this biosphere that's been doing this thing for four billion years. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so it's all, it's just cutting out the pretense. So I would, I would uh, you know, it's just, you, it's just getting rid of the bullshit. Right. Do, do you ascribe then some value, though, to it, like, that are is it it's reductionist okay one but is it pessimist like is your philosophy somehow informed by like the schopenhauer and Schopen, schopenhauer i don't even know how to say that but yeah, schopenhauer well, is like well, see, that's, classic a, that's an pessimism. example that that's an example though i mean you know schopenhauer you, he's got you know green book red book thick mm. book 600 800 pages uh, you know it's not that complicated okay mm. life is incredibly dangerous, right? And from the moment yes. you're born, oh, yeah. you're, you're rolling dice all over the place. That's all Schopenhauer's basically saying is, shit, is this really worth it? I mean, mm. it are, is, is, a, is a mating couple of lions worth mm. 16 dead cubs, right. right? I mean, if we if we were playing by real biological rules still, okay, mm. you'd have to have 10 kids just to keep up with the plague. Okay, I mean, just to keep up with the attrition, all right, of all the all the kids that's going to die, you'd have to have ten right, to right. replace yourself. That's the real world, and it's dismal and horrid. And anybody who thinks uh. anybody who thinks they're worth killing four kids to have, right? Am I worth killing four kids? Am I no, am I worth? You know, I'm just saying, am I worth the biosphere I consume every day? I, right. I don't think so. Right. I, I, so I'm agree. just saying, it's not pessimistic. It's you know, it's real. That's a it's label, realism. right? I mean, I'm not going to call them others the optimist. I'm just going to call them unrealistic or irrational yeah. or deluded. Naive. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with optimistic. How how does Buddhism inform your views? Like, I, I know you're like along this line, basically uh, attributing the horror of modern civilization or just existence to. To whatever it is that we do, I, I'm not sure how what I'm trying to say here. But well, well, this well, notion that everything is suffering is, is that is that just kind of like what you're saying in, in a different in a different line? How has Buddhism, if at all, informed your philosophy? Well, well I'd say it, not at all, just because the Buddhist huh. the Buddhist is kind of silly in the sense that they conclude mm. life is is a losing game, and yet they mm. keep playing it pro 
you know, they just keep playing it. You know what I mean? It's like they don't they don't say, let's stop reproducing. Let's right. get off the train. Uh, you know, they just keep investing in what they're claiming to be a losing game. And mm -hmm. that doesn't make much sense, right? Why should I have kids so they have to die by fire to escape? You know, that kind of, th mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The logic escapes me. So I wouldn't say I was personally in any way informed by Buddhism because, like I said, I didn't really understand it in my youth and I can't say that anything about it seems very logical. And again, I'm mm. just going to argue that this whole idea about being informed by something, the only thing you really need mm. to be informed by is, the I would argue, is maybe evolution. In, mm. And not necessarily just in Darwin's narrative, but in the true narrative of mm. the fact that right now there's you know, the, it, it's an insane amount of biological life on this planet that mm. does have neurons, okay? There's tiny right. little mites all over you right now, and they mm -hmm. all have brains with neurons in them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's stuff going on here, that, and, and it's on a level that's incredible, and people are just completely ignorant. They can't even see the sentience of the cows they're eating, let alone all right. the levels of it that exist in this biosphere. So would you contend, would you ascribe consciousness, or as Randy Helzerman would say, ascribing normative behavior to, I, as you're, I, I listened to your last podcast, I mean, sorry, your last video, you're talking about paramecium, and what, I don't know, what I gathered from it was that you thought, what, what I took from it, now I could be wrong now hearing you speak about it, uh, is that paramecium are somehow unconscious or is that do I have that wrong or are you of the mind that <laughs> no, of course they're are? they're not on the list they're yeah they're just machines they're just a you know they're barely functioning uh, on the level of a tree my hand so, my hand is more complex than a paramecium in many respects and if I cut my hand off I don't have the expectation that it's uh, feeling anything or doing any so neurons create consciousness. I would certainly uh -huh. say that it's a, it's a brain function that requires a certain number of neurons. But I'd say mm. the real point of it is, the po real point of consciousness, the function of it, is to create the sensation, because that's the valuer. The valuer mm. is the most, um, in, the, the most um, let's see, I've got to find the right word, right? It, so, something to, to take note of. The mm. most notable function of our brain is mm. the fact that it creates an understanding of value because yes, that's yes. the tricky part okay it's identifying things that are like each other you know what i mean that's easy you know seeing mm. something and saying that looks like that's easy for a brain to do right comparison mm. and matching but to understand value that's the tricky part because your brain is basically seeing something that is invisible in the real world mm. right in terms of the meaning of something the meaning is invisible and we're seeing it, and that's what right. the brain's doing, okay? I mean, seeing a fire and seeing the consequence of a fire burning a feeling thing, okay, that's mm -hmm. the complicated part, because the value is invisible. You know, it, it, it's, it's not a material thing, so to speak, um, and our brain sees it. At what point do you, like, because there has to be some kind of taxonomy or some kind of hierarchy of value, is that... Uh, I keep saying this, like, I want to say, is that informed by Maslow's hierarchy? Like, how does that factor in? How do you contend with the fact that it, it's constantly rearranging and switching? Like, the, what we would consider to take higher precedence, this well, cascade we're, we're going, of precedence. We're going based on some kind of notion of winner and based on some sort of notion that the competition about is, is about who's the best thief. You know what I mean? I mean, mm. evolution is a, a different kind of game than, you know, some sort of honorable game, right? I mean, the cheaters right. win in evolution, right? You don't, right. You, you can disguise yourself as a poisonous thing and pretend you're poisonous, you know what I mean? And win. Mm. Lots of cheating going on in evolution. And the biggest yeah. cheat is, in, in our understanding of what complexity means or what's, what's significant, well, the only thing that's really significant is the feeling thing, and that happened... I would say close to a billion years ago, okay, and that's a real, uh, you know, that's before insects and crustaceans and fish went their separate mm. way. I mean, we're talking about trilobites or something, all right? We're talking about okay. going way back to find the first ouch, and mm. the first ouch is the game, right? That's when, a, that's when an organism's welfare matters, is when it can be hurt. It doesn't mm. matter if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't feel and I step on it, who cares, right? It just can't matter. What do you think about this game-like quality that consciousness or that the brain 
applies to the world. It's a, just a simplification. It has to simplify a complex circumstance. So it has to mm. label it, right? It has to identify threat and identify food and identify, you know, it's doing that fight and flight thing, whatever, feed, mm. fight and flight. It's mm -hmm. so, it's just simplifying a, 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 a very nuanced environment into uh, generalities and pigeonholes. You know, it's just mm. pigeonholing the world and then applying its selfishness to what uh, what can I eat? Uh, what can I fuck? You know, hmm. uh, and what should I get the fuck away from? Yeah, uh, among the the individuals that you've interacted with on YouTube, one of whom is Piro. Um, wh wh where where do you stand relative to Piro, or how does where does Piro stand rather relative well, <laughs> to you? That, you, just, you just said it right there. Piro doesn't stand. Okay, uh, hmm. Weebles wobble. They don't stand up. Um, okay, he just bounces and bounces and bounces, and you can never nail him down. You can never pin mm. him anywhere. He'll, you know, one week he's, and the next week he's something else. So, mm. yeah, just no point. Does that speak to, like, the, the ever-evolving uh, kind of scale of precedence that you can't necessarily fix yourself to one rock solid unerring unchanging principle given the fact that everything is continual continually evolving well i would argue exactly the opposite because that's definitely what mm. i i'm attempting to do is to r nail it all down into simple language put it into simple mm. words and just say this is how it's this is how it really works i'm doing it with physics even i mean this is how mm. it really works and it's really dumb and it's really simple and mm. that's sort of what i'm arguing when i'm talking about you know we're just bugs <clears throat> okay, and we can sing and dance. Mm. Okay, and we can use language. Big deal. What are we using language to do? Get right, puss, right, right. get pussy. You know, yeah. <laughs> sniss, you know evade the IRS. Uh, do, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're just using it to scheme. We're not doing anything brilliant. Right. Uh, I was going to ask, like, I have a list of different things here, like um, police, citizenry, relations, Trump and the alt-right, future of occupation, universal basic income, AI robotics, and stuff like that. But it seems like all of that stuff kind of pales in comparison. How are you able to kind of uh, perspective shift and apply your philosophy to these other kind of what might seem kind of like irrelevant almost yeah, uh, well, concepts it's, it's, or ideas? You just do the plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just uh -huh. know... Uh, I ain't, uh, plan A ain't happening tomorrow, so I'm going to have to use Plan B. And, you know, oh, Plan B ain't going to work either, so I'm going to have to go to Plan mm -hmm. C. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, you just play with whatever you can fix. You know, so, you know, so anything, if I can stop one person from stepping into dog do, okay, mm -hmm. I've got something done today, right? So, yeah. so, yes, there's always something you can make better. There's always something you can fix. But, yeah, we're a long way, okay, a long, long way. From getting mm. to the big fix, which is, hey, human beings have to prove their bullshit. You know what I mean? Everybody's talking mm. shit like they know mm. what they're talking about, but nobody's balls are in the fire, so to speak. You know what I mean? They, no it's all talk. Yes, it's all talk, okay? And it all fucks somebody else, all right? Mm -hmm. And so we got to make this talk mean something. If you're going to say something about what's valuable or what means something or what should happen, well, then, right. yeah, your nuts should be in the fire. So if we're going to have a death penalty then the governor's nuts should be in the fire. He right. should say, I saw the fucking trial. The guy's guilty as fuck, okay? Right. And you can yeah. shoot me in the head, okay, if I'm wrong. Because I saw the trial, okay? He's right. guilty. Yeah, now, if, yeah, a governor, if a governor doesn't have the balls to say that, shoot me mm. in the head if I'm wrong, then mm. he shouldn't be signing death warrants. Right, certainly not. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I, I'm going to ask a question... Um, that I, I, I was in a debate with my supervisor the other day, and we were talking about, you know, def I was making this case that we don't have enough money devoted to uh, preventing an existential threat in the form of an asteroid hitting planet Earth and so on and so forth. And his, his argument was that it's so infinitesimally small, pro such an infinitesimally small probability that it's not even worth the venture. Now, you are famously known for your antinatalism. Which, for like, we're gonna. I want to nail down a strict definition of this. You're not saying that you want the human race to become extinct, 
what you're saying is you want us to stop reproducing. Is that correct? Well, I'm just saying I'm giving you the, <laughs> I'm giving you the decent option. I'm saying as a democracy, I like to do it formally, okay, mm. and legally. But the point mm. is, if I did have a red button in front of me and it blew the earth in half, I'd be pressing it, whether you like mm. it or not. So I'm quite convinced it's the right thing to do, just because you don't have any moral right to impose life and to torture it. You're all doing Frankenstein games. It's all quite disgusting. You're all, you're all very bad and naughty. So here's, here's the, the, I'm sure this is the classic argument that's made, the, the counter-argument to that. Why not suicide? Well, obviously, if I'm if I'm dead, I can't make the argument. So number one, it really it really it really, it really degrades my argument skills when I'm dead. Okay, I I, I really <laughs> suck. Okay, in yeah, arguments. I think hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, when I'm dead, I'm really not very good. Okay, yeah, mm. uh, my comebacks really suck. So mm. yeah, so that's the first obvious answer. The second answer is, um, you know, once you're invested in life, you know, it's like, well, what? I went through all this shit to accomplish nothing. Fuck you. No, I'm here. Uh, you know, I'm not throwing it away, and and you really don't want me thinking in those terms because, rationally, you start saying, well, if I'm leaving, I might as well take the trash out with me, you know. Right, right. And so, so that's almost a dangerous kind of uh, uh, thought process because if I have, if you give me nothing to lose, um, mm. you know, I might press a lot of little red buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> okay. So. I, I know this might be speculation, and I know how that annoys you, so I'll try to make it as brief as possible. But let's say we're, we're, we're having humans, you have people like Elon Musk who want to go to Mars and reboot civilization or establish uh, another, another version 2.0 or whatever. Would you be against the, the enterprise of booting up a humanity 2.0 on mars provided <laughs> yeah. like what would have to be the uh, the rules is, is there any is there any means of control yeah well, the, the rules I, you know what i go ahead torture yourselves if you want to you won't you won't first you won't be able to do it because you'll it's just not possible uh, mm. yeah you know what i'm saying the, the, the grade in the in your life is going to be so substantial your life's going to be so miserable that you'll eventually mm. kill yourself if you go um mm. uh, because it's going to be bleak as fuck and mm. but yeah, of course I'm against it. What do we? What, where where have we demonstrated any kind of rationality? What exactly is the utopia? I mean, mm. uh, what uh, you know is fucking in space somehow cooler? Oh, I fucked mm. on Mars. I mean, is that really what mm. gets you people off? You you can't you can't do anything like you have to join the mile high club or something you can't figure out how to do it in a normal bed anymore you have mm. to do some kind of kinky shit and start shoving vegetables up your ass or doing some other kind of bullshit <laughs> i mean there's just absolutely no rational equation here all this is is people this is like children playing lego i mean so why does <clears throat> why, why does anyone do anything then it seems like well we shouldn't like it, do you ascribe positive value to anything well, I, yeah, I, 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 I subscribe positive value to preventing harm. Yes. Mm. Okay, there. That's, that's a good. Uh, everything, yeah, yeah. Else, everything else that you're going to claim is a good, I'm going to claim is doubtful because I can probably explain to you how it's really not a good. You're just fixing a negative condition that preexisted. If we could get everyone to, you know, first and foremost, go about their daily lives preventing harm, would you kind of ease back on the uh, pressing the red button? Like, Why? Well, is we, we, we create the harm. We're not fixing something that's broken in the universe. We're fixing the broken we create. We're the problem, right. okay? We're the broken thing. The living instrument is the need machine. There's no need hmm. outside of it. The universe doesn't need us. And that proof of that is, like, right. is the universe crying because there's no Martians? Are human not. beings even crying because there's no Martians? We're supposed to understand Certainly. what a tragedy it is that they don't exist, right? It's a horrible, mm. awful tragedy. The Martians don't exist. How many human tears do you really think have actually fallen down a cheek and actually hit the ground because people are lamenting the horrible holocaust of the non-existence of the seven billion Martians? It's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's awful. It, what a catastrophe. Right? right Isn't that? Happening. Well, I'm just saying. Isn't that, doesn't that just prove that all we are is bigots? We're just talking mm. about ourselves and we're just doing this vicarious thing that 
well, if I send some people to fucking space, somehow I'm going to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. That's stupid. Oh, but don't tell mm -hmm. me it's stupid because I live based on stupid shit. Mm. Yeah. And that's there, uh, okay, with the... Uh, okay, so wait. Uh, w yeah, preventing harm. Back to preventing harm. If th I just don't understand, like, is it... Are we just doomed? It, it, in, in your philosophy, in your outlook, it, it's just gloom and doom. Like, there is—is is there any chance we could get our shit together? Well, I'm saying, even I create a perfect virtual reality. All right, I, yes. I create a video game where you don't really die, you don't really suffer, you just play and get laid and all that kind of stuff. Right. The only thing that really makes that fun is that you have to walk the desert first, so to speak. Right. I, uh. I mean, to really enjoy the water, you have to walk the desert. Right. To really enjoy the food, you. Hey, I got to stimulate my appetite, right? If mm. you're not hungry or you're actually sick, food isn't mm. going to do it for you, right? So we know mm. that it's all created out of that desire engine. So you got to do that first. And we know that what really makes you passionate mm. is deprivation. If I pile mm. up the deprivation, that's, you know, if I pile up the pain and then I take it away, ah, oh, ecstasy right you don't get better pleasures than that right you're living in so, poverty and i give you the winning lottery ticket right oh bliss right and it's just so a stupid our, ticket it's a stupid ticket right i just gave you the idea of, right. of being relieved from your poverty being, being relieved from the obligation to work for the rest of your life and mm -hmm. just the idea of that makes you happy is the uh is, so our pleasure is is absolutely predicated upon our pain that's the i'm argument. just saying that no matter if you give me an example of something you think is a true good i'll explain to you how psychologically you're just compensating from our deficit it's really well, not a good you're just fixing something that was broken from the day you were born and right. that's all you're feeding you're not feeding anything that there's no such thing as a real good there's just getting rid of your pain Okay. Right. Some well, what about what about reducing harm, though? What about that? Like w when I ask you, there's something, and you say, "Oh, how about reducing harm?" Yeah. Well, the best I way to reduce harm is don't make a harmable. Like I say, the Martians are doing it really well. They are the mm. greatest harm preventers <laughs> and stoppers in the universe. They are fantastic <laughs> because they quit. They don't make messes. That's the best way to clean up a mess is not to make it. So there's just no way to operate once once something exists. By virtue of his, its existence, necessarily, there must yeah, Well, there's clues. Forth. There's really clues. You know, if people really look hard with their big, giant brain, they'll see clues. Like, mm. babies come out of this slimy, bloody mess. They mm. pop out in this horrible way. They have to have mm. shit sucked out of them. And then they mm. start crying. Now, mm. now, that should give you a clue that maybe this isn't a great idea. Hmm. It doesn't well, doesn't look mind. happy, right? Does it? Does it look like, hey, I just landed in bliss? No, it doesn't right. look like that. None of the whole process <laughs> looks any blissy to me. I don't see any bliss <laughs> anywhere in that fucking mess. So there is absolutely no fucking way to unfuck this situation. Well, uh, it's Cannibal Island. I mean, it, look. Okay, this is my acronym, right? Consumption, reproduction, mm. addiction parasitism right because it's an island planet Crap. we all become fucking parasites that's right it that's mm. all the that's what evolution is made out of those four letters say it all and it's crap they they well, suck as ingredients that's the ingredients that makes life consumption reproduction addiction and addiction. parasitism that's all we got we got nothing else what about systems in which uh, there are beneficial, I don't know what the opposite of a parasite is, but there, there are these, these organisms which go, which, uh, which shift sy sy into sy a kind Yeah, yeah, symbiotic is the word they use, right? Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, doesn't that sound all kind of lovely and pretty? That just means when you're really old parasites. It's like watching the old couple, <laughs> right, right? Oh, look, they're so much in love, and no, they're not in love, right? They're just... Uh, they're just kind of attached at the armpits because they've been living with each other for 50 years and they don't know how to live without each other. Um, what about the, uh, the what about the birds that uh, take the mites out of the elephants and so on? 
Well, I'm I mean, just saying a it's symbiotic. It's, 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 yes, it's symbiotic, but I'm just saying it just started off as parasitism. It started off as an exploitation, and it, you know became a mutually beneficial one. That doesn't does that does that make it good? So, no, it, so just, it just means it's an old it's an old attachment, and they both now have become dependent on each other fixing their problems. Okay? So it's not a good. It's not a good, but it's not necessarily a bad. Are you saying it's kind of drifted into some kind of stage of senescence well, well, where it's well, neither good or bad? Uh, well, I, I guess it just kind of depends in, in how you define good and bad over time. Because this is when it, what it really matters is in these old relationships, it's that they've become evolved and dependent. So mm. if you want to say that exploitation being replaced by dependency is good, I'm mm. going to say that no, that's just a sign that's of your that, that's a sign of your genetic weakness so now the elephant right. is genetically weaker because he doesn't have defenses against bugs unless the birds pick them off right mm. and the birds are now dependent on a meal they can't catch mm. food in the real world they can only catch it off an elephant's back but isn't that predicated upon the idea that organisms should exist independent of any other organism when in fact we're actually <clears throat> dealing with a very complex dynamic I know, network? but I'm just saying that ideally that's the way it should be, but I'm just saying then it just it's like a lifeboat, okay, and we're just become cannibals. I mean that's inevitably gonna happen on an island planet. So we're on an island planet and mm. somebody's gonna have to learn how to eat shit, right? If I put one thing on the planet, right, right, right <laughs> something's going right. to have to learn how to eat its shit, right? Because so the there's only no other way, way. The, right, I agree. So then, naturally, proceeding forward from there, the only option it would seem is to get the fuck off the planet. <clears throat> well, again, but then you have to still synthesize all the things we are dependent on. We're four mm -hmm. billion years dependent on this biosphere creating our sustenance, so to speak, uh, our yes, atmospherics. Sir. And mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I can, like I said, I can make a virtual reality. I can shove your brain in a beaker and I can make it mm -hmm. happy. But I'm just saying, why would I create brains to do that? Okay, maybe it's fine as a treatment for you, okay, now that you're here and I want to make you comfortable, I'll stick some electrodes in your head and make you comfortable. But I'm just mm. saying, why would I, as an intelligence, say, let's do that some more? That's like saying, in, let's invent Martians. Why would I invent Martians, okay, and the Martians don't exist, should I really invent them? Should I invent Venetians? Shall I invent uh, mm. Plutonians and Satyrites and mm. uh, Uraniusisms? <laughs> should, should I waste my time contriving excuses to make robots to mm. beep around going, beep, 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 me fun, happy, happy, mm. me, me so horny, me so horny, mm. beep, beep. I mean, what's the point? Mm. You just yeah, need I... machines. Why would I make a need machine? I agree that you, you, you won't be able to fundamentally resolve the core pain. You won't ever be able to address that. However, I think that by reducing harm, by implementing a VR system or uh, sponsoring a colonization of Mars or something... You, <laughs> you, how, how, do, how does putting people on Mars fix the people on Earth? Well, it gets us off the cannibal boat, Well, well I'm right? just saying, how does it fix it? So what, what happens to the cannibal people? Are you just going to ignore them? Oh, uh, just pretend they don't exist. Yeah, we're happy here on our little island of fun. So fuck all that. That's like the riches <laughs> attitude or something. Okay, ignore the slaves. They're not real people. Yeah, that's ignore true. the that inner is, slaves. They don't matter. Problem. Well, I'm just saying you're not fixing the human problem. You're just no, you're transporting. Out. Well, you're transporting twelve of them somewhere else to make a mess on another planet. Create right, another. Right. Create another shithole. Or, or if they are to affect a utopia, you're abandoning you know, the overwhelming majority of the population of the planet. Well, like I said, utopia made out of what? It's a zero-sum game, yeah. so utopia means you didn't fail. But it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you accomplished anything. There's, the universe doesn't need you as much as you think it does. Right. There's no calculation you can possibly make that says somehow there must be human beings. Because if you say there all. must be human beings, then you have to say there must be Martians. And then there must right. be Venetians. And then there must be satellites. And then there must be... I can go through the entire universe and say, I have to put some kind of feeling thing on this stupid planet so we uh. can struggle, struggle, struggle to have an orgasm. Why would I do mm. that? Hmm. Uh, the the consciousness y you say is is defined by the neuron, right? The neuron produces consciousness, correct? Well, you have to. I'm just saying the only model we have of anything that developed intelligence 
is this model. Okay, the mm -hmm. model that in, that is informed by a process of learning, and the only, in my opinion, the only way it can learn is it has to create reward and punishment. That means it has mm -hmm. to create a real whip of some kind. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't you can't just synthesize that crap. You, you can't no synthesize you There's can't no synthesize the prime directive in the sense of a self interest, right? Now, say say if I was a robot. Mm -hmm. All right, completely, and I had complete right, artificial right. intelligence. Right. All right now, explain to me why a feeling matters. Well, it matters because you're able to simulate within the robot brain what's taking place within the biological neuron. Well, well I'm just saying. I'm just saying how 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 if I can't feel it, how are right, you going right. to prove to me when you say feel? There's a thing called a bad feeling, and I'm going to say right. bad how. What do you mean bad? Mm. There's no bad mm. idiot. So, so <laughs> you you're know, making so no such thing. What are you talking AI. about? You, you don't believe that AI will ever achieve true consciousness. I'm just saying the only way you can achieve it is through creating a value engine. You have to create a self-interest, and it has to have something that's going to stick it somewhere. That's going to go out. It has to so know. Okay. It has to know what a whip is. Hmm. It, before so, it can understand that it somehow can cause bad. It can't understand that, whipping is bad if it never felt the whip. And that has to be biological then. I'm not saying it has to be. I'm just saying realistically it's an illusion in our biological brain. So I'm sure you can create an illusion in a synthesized machine. But I'm just saying we have no way to do the evolution, right? <coughs> how, do, how do we evolve such a thing? Because let's say we even try the experiment. What if we mm -hmm. get it to guy go, ooh, that hurt? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How, how, how do we know if we're going to torture the damn thing, right? If mm -hmm. it can't talk. What if it has no language and it can't talk and it can't say ouch? But we're torturing it. Alive. We're torturing yeah. it, right? I mean, how, how can you, you can't play that game, right? Let's try to make a consciousness when we don't know what we're doing. Oh, yeah, great idea. So precautionary principle would dictate that we shouldn't even begin to embark on such an enterprise. <clears throat> Why do we need it? Our brains are quite capable of doing intelligence. We don't need an artificial intelligence. All it can do for you is count to a million faster. Now, is that really that fucking important? Artificial intelligence will not answer these big questions for you any better than you can answer them because the facts are pretty simple and we know them. Okay, and you can mm. add it all up and say, "I know what addiction is." Yeah, that's not a good thing. Come on. What, what if it? What if it meant? What if a, an object like this, capable of calculating at this rate, w was able to affect the uh, the transformation of the cannibal boat into one where resources are are distributed effectively, efficiently, quickly, etc.? Um, what if some type of machine like this? We're able to ameliorate the condition, the human condition. I'm just saying, you still can't. I, I said it before. Even if I made right. a perfect virtual reality to put something right. into, would mm. I really want to create the want? Would I really mm. want to make a uh, give you, like, say, I'm making you now? I'm going to give you mm. memories, and I'll give you memories of, let's say, 25 years of loneliness and rejection and all mm. this stuff, so I can make it so you can fall in love in a really big way. So I'm going mm. to give you memories of pain and loneliness mm. and sadness and mm. you know defeat and all that crap. We know that the only thing that builds character is pain. We know that, mm. right? Is, is mm. that complicated to anybody? You don't gain any kind of true empathy or decency without, mm. you know, without having your, your toes burned. Okay, and we mm. see it in people. That's why people like a Donald Trump have no clue what's happening on planet Earth. It's because he's mm. always had a net. He's always worked with a net. He doesn't know what right. it, he doesn't know what it's like to fall off the tightrope rope and have a couple of limbs broken and then have mm. to and then have to have the balls to get up there again, right? After mm. you've had a leg broken or an arm broken and now you've got to get back up on that wire. Mm. Uh, what about um what about someone might make the argument, well, he did go bankrupt four times, something like that. Six times. Opera six times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, what about that? I mean, the, it, to say that, you know, I don't know Donald Trump's pain or Hillary Clinton's pain or whatever, <laughs> the, while the, I the agree point, that the, they the, all the, operated the, with nets. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm just saying, that's, is that really going to scare you? you? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. be, like losing your house? It, was he really, in, did he have any fear that he was going to have to live on the street? 
Does he have right, any fear yeah. that he's going to eat out of a dumpster? Come on. No, it's Okay, not. he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't faced the lion. He's always had a cage. The lion's always been on a leash, at least. You know what I'm saying? So, so there's he's no never... way that Donald Trump can appreciate a good meal because he's never really been hungry. I mean, is that the is that the argument we're making? It seems like it's just. Uh, well, well, I would say that he's he's the, he he amplifies that right because he thinks the world wants gold plated sneakers right. He thinks everybody right. wants diamonds and rubies and sparkle and this and all this crap. So that's mm -hmm. his mentality, right? Is that we're never satisfied and that we have to have it fancier and we have to have Taj Mahal, right? That's what he was selling to us, right? Mm -hmm. So so yeah. let's understand who needs that shit. Well, that, right. the person no. who needs that shit is the person who has no appreciation, okay, mm. uh, who has just grad, who's had it easy, and they just keep saying, well, I have one Lamborghini, now I'll have two. It's, it's like a Jay Leno or something, somebody who seems like a rational human mm. being in some respect, and then you find out he's got 674 motorcycles, and that he has mm. a whole house, doesn't have any people in it, just has motorcycles in it. And you're saying to yourself, mm. well, that's something Forbes did, right? Forbes had palaces all over the world full of mm. toy soldiers, right? Mm. And the only people in the palaces were dusting the glass vases that the soldiers are in, right? So mm. you know how surreal that is? That's what mm. he thinks is valuable in the world are fucking soldiers, not the people working for him, not the people living homeless that could live mm. in the goddamn palace. No, the thing, no, he had the whole thing climate controlled, no doubt, too, right? I bet Jay Leno mm. keeps the house with his motorcycles in it climate controlled because, you know, we can't have those motorcycles get harmed in any way. But fuck it, some guy on the street with schizophrenia. Right. Screw that asshole. I'll hit him with my right. Rolls Royce. Right. They fetishize the objects. I mean, it's not so much that they fetishize I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out the object. lack of character. I'm just saying they have no character. Okay? But, so, someone like Jay Leno, I mean, no one becomes successful overnight. You, you have over 3,000 videos to your name. You value those videos. Like, if they were to go missing suddenly, like, you want to keep them on, on a server. <laughs> I, you want to... <laughs> yeah, well, isn't that a, a, a colossally... Uh, you know, a, a dime comparison to a million dollars. I'm just saying, if it, you know, if it cost any real money to do that, I wouldn't sacrifice for it. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly living a meager existence because I have such an appreciation for what a dollar can buy. So I'll be the. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to buy on sale, and I'm always going to buy what right. I need. I mean, I make my own bread too, and shit. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I don't. I, I, I you, know, you don't fuck around. Well, you're not going to get the ar You're not going to get the argument. If I was a rich man tomorrow, I'd be a mm. poor man a week later. Because right. I, I, I know what to do with money, okay? I know how to invest it in a better right. world. I, I don't need it to pay me back. No, certainly not. But what, what about the inherent relativity of things in that when a wealthy person, become, when, when, when a person becomes wealthy, they're, they, instead of buying that Honda, they'll buy the Lexus. Like everything just kind of scales up. They, a lot of wealthy people are living paycheck to paycheck as much as poor people are because they're buying more expensive shit. So it really is zero sum in that regard. Well, again, it's the, the zero sum was their lack of character in the first place, like I just said. I mean, it's the fact that mm. they have no appreciation, right? They, they, if, they, if they, It's just like, you know, with people's sex and all the rest of this stuff, you know? It, yeah. it just, it's just an escalation of the porn. You know what I mean? Mm. So once they have this, then they want two of them. And then they want it, mm. uh, you know, then they want it a la mode. And then they want it, you, you know, they just... <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying. Their their yeah. their their tolerance keeps going higher. So you know, mm. instead of uh, you know, you, you got to smoke this much, then they got to smoke this much, then they got you know, it's like cocaine or anything else. It just gets out of control. That's the what? nature of addiction. So that's is that that's an inevitability. Like there is no <clears throat> other way. There's no way to like uh, cleave. Well, to that's some what kind I'm just saying. Moderate. No, of course there is a way because once you once you know what it is to be homeless and on the street. Okay, mm. you're gain appreciation, and you can always go back to that in your brain, mm. and say, "I know what this is really about." Okay, this mm -hmm. is really about not getting eaten by the lion. Okay, that's what this is really right. about. So your argument is that the child needs to have their hand burned on the stove. They can't learn that you know not to put their hand on the stove. They have to do it. Well, some of that has to happen. Like I said, getting lucky, almost breaking your leg. 
can be a very good lesson. You know what I'm saying? Almost this happening, almost that. I mean, I almost got killed a few times, and with each time I almost got killed, I learned something. Um, oh, my God. Well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I, I fell down once, right? On, and there was a stick in the woods, you know, a broken yeah. stick. And it went right between my neck and my shoulder, right, <laughs> when I fell. And I was saying, there, you know, that was one of those examples where, oh, mm. look, an inch, an inch yeah, difference, an inch left, okay, an and, right. I, and I got a tragedy here. I got a real problem because I got a big yes. stick in my neck, right? So yeah. those little things give you appreciation, and then for the rest of your life, you're thinking about sticks when you're in the woods. Right. You know, you're, you're so, mindful of the fact that you got to be a little bit careful. Don't be an asshole. So there's an element of luck in, in, in an organism that learns it's required either to be lucky or to get burned or have a stick go in your neck. Well, I'm just saying that the, that's the best way is to get lucky, you know, to get as mm. close as possible to doom, okay, mm. to, to be yes. almost, you know, you know what I'm saying, don't be homeless permanently, just be homeless right. for a week. Uh, you know, right. just enough to give you a taste and a lesson, not too much to kill you and destroy you and make you a lunatic. Hmm. That's sound. It's a sound argument. Uh, Ken Cherbuck. Uh, I, I wanted to talk briefly about Ken. Ken was uh, prominent on Stickham for some time. I think he was a lawyer from Vermont or New Hampshire. He, one recommendation that he gave to many of the people that would debate in those rooms was to memorize the list of logical fallacies, and I would add the cognitive biases as well. Do you pay much attention to that shit? Like in terms of argumentation, you're you're a first principles first kind of guy, right? Well, like, I like I like the idea. I've come to it. Okay, so I can't say this is something I've figured out before because it's something I've realized now is that mm -hmm. this is always a problem with arguments, right? Because it all gets very redundant. You end up mm. going over the same stuff, so there needs to be some sort of learning curve before you get into the real nuances of a conversation where yeah, yeah sure. both parties have acquired this knowledge base and mm. have accepted certain premises. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have a conversation with people where you've accepted premises, the loophole, you know, the catch-22 starts. You, you know, mm. because all of a sudden God gets thrown as an answer or something, you know what I'm saying. All the evasions mm. can start, all the fallacious right. arguments can start, so you have to eliminate the possibility of the outs, and then you just mm. deal with what we have established as facts. And when you put those around yourself, like, okay, there's no free will, and there's this, and there's this, and this, then, you know, you can make your argument. Mm -hmm. Do you think that theist or atheist or whatever whatever brand or stripe of belief system that someone might, might, might have, that they're essentially saying the same thing using different language? I wouldn't say there's much similarity between somebody who's um, trying to find out the truth and somebody who is addicted to a fairy tale. So, okay. so I can't put those in the same category. There's people who are honestly trying to know, understand what it is to be mm -hmm. alive. And then there's people who have a scheme in their head that says, well, even if there is no God, it's good for people. So mm -hmm. I'm going to defend it. Yeah, I don't believe I don't believe there's a hell, but I think people need to be afraid of Satan. You know that mm. kind of idiocy. You know that, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, yeah. grotesquely dishonest. And I would say that most religious people are grotesquely dishonest. They demonstrate no faith. They demonstrate no, especially no faith in the Christian Jesus. I mean, for fuck's sake! Mm. <laughs> they, you know they're they're walking around Christians with guns, and you're just like, yeah, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? How much faith do you have in anything Jesus said? You can't you can't turn your cheek once, right, you know, right, let, right. let alone yeah, seventy awesome. times seven times, you bastards. Yeah, I'm just I wonder about like the semantic differences between people, and when a theist in it in what we would call his or her right mind and an atheist in his or her right mind would simply refer to the universe and God kind of synonymously in, in, in and be ignorant of that fact. But they, they are basically saying the, the same thing. Like Dick Cheney, for all intents and purposes, is like the worst kind of person that you could possibly conceive of. Yet, at his core, like he wants his grandchildren to be happy. Like, it's hard to reconcile these fucking... Um, well, no, I, I, I don't think there's anything to reconcile there. I don't think he gives much thought to his grandchildren. If he does, he figures they're going to have the safety net. You know, they're going to be living mm. in cushy land, so why do they got to worry about anything? Um, mm. So uh, that, that's just the mindset of the elitists. So the elitists mm. don't really bother doing much thinking. 
they, <clears throat> you know, they're Randy and nihilist cunts. Kind of um, soci yeah, sociopathic individuals. Yeah, well, yeah, well, they, 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 they just find some rationalization to make mm -hmm. it go away. And I, they, all of us do it to some extent, you know what I mean? I mean, we all, we all have our bigotries, you know, it's a, it matters more what happens to the cute girl. Or this is mm -hmm. more, you know what I'm saying, I mean, we're all bigots. And, Certainly. And, and I'm just saying their bigotry is even more disgusting in the sense that it's based on nepotism and some other kind of nonsense. Like, it's okay because mm -hmm. I've protected my kind. My people are safe, and that's all that matters, my family. Now, you had said, stated earlier that what you're, what you're essentially trying to do is pin everything down in, in, in very very strict black and white kind of Boolean terms. Either it is or it isn't, right? Is there any room in there for some kind of Bayesian gray, like some kind of amorphous, like it's not really zero, it's not really one? Like how do you resolve the quantum? <clears throat> Well, I, I do that. I have a whole theory that eliminates the need for all of that Heisenberg uncertainty and all the rest of that mm. crap. That all goes away. Um, mm. uh, there, there, there's no, yeah, no, there, I'm sorry, the universe is much more rigid and simple. It's a mechanical system and cause and effect is rigid and all of that stuff counts. Um, I'd certainly say there's nuances that are beyond our perception. I'd say the 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 the, the thing about consciousness that's interesting is this mixture mm. of this linear kind of um, um, uh, analog, okay, mm. uh, feeling thing versus mm. this very digital thinking thing, right? The thinking mm. thing is very black and white. The feeling thing is very, very analog. I don't know how Fuzzy. much I, you're know, right, I, you, you can have two feelings, right? You can have a feeling, mm. I want to survive, and then you can have a feeling, but I don't want to be harmed. And which mm. one do I want more? And you, you know what I'm saying. Mm. So it's like it's like picking a dessert. You, you know, it's it's a really when you look at what you're feeling, you're saying, well, mm. how do you pick? Because you have this uncertainty, this mushy feeling thing. So it's mm. not as it's not as obviously rigid. It's rigid, I'm saying in reality, okay, mm. but it's not rigid in terms of perception. Once it hits the human uh, human nervous system, then things start to get a little fuzzy. It's subconsciously deterministic. It's not mm. consciously obvious. I guess that's all right. I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, is, do you, so then, by extension, you would you would say that there is a point past which we can't predict, no matter what kind of statistical models we have, how accurate they may have been in the past, that there is always the chance that hostile extraterrestrials could invade planet Earth tomorrow, for lack of a better expression. You get what I'm saying, though. Uh, that there is a point past which we can't predict with certainty whether or not something is or isn't going to happen. We can't predict anything in the sense that we can't isolate ourselves from the fact that there could be a comet out there right now that's heading right for us and we're going to be dead in 48 seconds. Mm. Um, so in that sense, we can't predict anything is a certainty. Mm. We can't say anything is an absolute. I'm just saying we all we can go by is reason. Mm -hmm. And we can go by some kind of standard of reasonable doubt. And I'm just saying, I don't see any reason. I, mm -hmm. I, I'd say it's proven beyond reasonable doubt that there's no fairies. There's no leprechauns. Right, there's no right, right. magic in the system. It's a really crude system. It made a really crude process called evolution. And that process mm -hmm. was so crude, it took four billion years to make us, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a crude system, not a... Are you... <clears throat> Not not a crisply defined uh, kind of very elegant, sophisticated type of system. Right. It's 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 harsh and brutal in the sense of mm -hmm. its crudeness, and um, yeah, and, and we're that's why we're harsh and brutal as a result because it's not mm -hmm. a it's not a, there's not nothing fancy about it. That's why it's consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction, or mm -hmm. consumption, reproduction. Uh, addiction and parasitism. Crap. Harsh, harsh human beings produce er, as an expression of a harsh uh, universe. I want to ask you, we're getting towards the end of the podcast. I have one more question, kind of line of questioning that I want to get to. There's a, there's a gentleman, he's a quant, he's, he made a lot of money in financial markets, but he's kind of uh, what you would call a black sheep within the financial markets because he's very outspoken against the kind of the rigging of the system and uh, the hedge funds and all of that shit. His name is Nassim Taleb and he wrote a book called Black Swan 
the highly impro the the the, the 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 probability of highly improbable events, and he has a new book out called Anti Fragility. Um, his his theory basically in Black Swan is that there are certain events, certain uh, transformative catalytic events that take place that have taken place in history, and that humans are in order to make sense of these events that radically change the topography of reality, uh, that basically what we do is we reverse, we kind of backwards or retroactively ascribe predictability to what is actually an inherently radically, chaotically unpredictable uh, uh, phenomenon, whether that's September 11th or whether that's the internet emerging or the evolution of consciousness or whatever, uh, would you follow that we kind of take for granted uh, our, our post priori knowledge of things that happened in the past and we look back on them and say, yeah, I could have seen that coming when in fact we had no fucking idea? Well, I think, yeah, look, I, I, we keep having this conversation like it matters somehow, but I'm just saying, yeah, you can know that a seatbelt will save your life 82% of the time. It'll cause mm -hmm. less harm. And mm -hmm. then 17% of the time, it'll get you harmed more. Um, mm -hmm. That's a fact. Okay, so what? Uh, you know, you still wear your seatbelt, fucker. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't do you any good to know that, oh, there's all this stuff you can't control because you can't see it happen. I didn't see that uh, the president was going to get a blowjob. Oh, okay, I didn't see that coming. You, you right. know, and it would end up on the news, and I'd end up being impeached for getting a blowjob, and this would be a whole big thing, and blah, 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 blah. No, I didn't see that do, coming. Who cares? Do, I knew do, something do, stupid was going to happen. Sooner or later, something stupid's going to happen. Right. That's so, my prediction. Wait. My prediction is something stupid will happen. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be 100% right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, but, but that, that, that example of the seatbelt, wearing the seatbelt, are you using that just kind of as an expression, like given the anti-natalist and kind of not, you know, given I'm that? I'm just saying philosophy. we know the probabilities, and, and I'm just saying we know what's in this mixture, and so there's no fairies, there's no leprechauns, so why are right. we expecting that there's going to be some singularity we go to and everything will poof into gold bars and we'll all be happy <laughs> because we all have gold bars in our pockets and somehow that'll make Sweet. us all that'll make us all feel better because we have gold in our pockets, even though we don't have anywhere to spend it, but we have it. We'll, be, we'll have tons of gold bars in our pockets, but we'll be transported into the middle of the ocean. It'll be well, awesome. I'm just saying, it's like religion, you know, the pearly gates and the rubies around, you know, when they describe, you know, when you read the Bible, you know, they have little descriptions mm -hmm. in there, and, you know, the whole bottom of heaven is covered in rubies and emeralds. And mm -hmm. I, doesn't that sound a little bit silly? I've lived mm -hmm. and died so I can go up to heaven and rub mm -hmm. rubies. Do I really want to rub rubies or something and just watch the rubies ruby? Yeah. Wait, is that really something that's going to matter to me? No, certainly not. Well, then, uh, what, what do you think of the technological singularity that's put forth by people like Ray Kurzweil and so on and so forth that's supposedly predicated upon scientific uh, falsifiability and... Uh, the scientific method. Well, well whatever. There's, there's no scientific method. They still haven't. They still haven't proven Einstein's <laughs> lensing. They haven't. You know, it's all a big fraud. To tell you the truth, physics is such a lie. Um, mm. You know, so much of it is just crap. Absolute crap. They make up crap. Dark matter. They made it <laughs> up. It's just crap. Okay. They needed huh. to fix the math. They, they they've created a Huygens thing to fix the two slit experiment. It just horrible lies and deceptions are just through I mean I didn't realize that but yes physicists are just absolutely full of crap so so nothing really I, I, I have to talk about this um, but nothing nothing truly bizarre is happening at the quantum scale it's a bug planet man okay and the universe is made mostly out of balls of fire okay there's just mm. nothing spectacularly fun about this whole universe adventure thing it's mm. round balls banging into each other some of them are on fire some of them are leaking radiation constantly this is the universe, okay? And in this little corner of it, what are we doing? Oh, that's right. We're playing some silly lifeboat game where we get to eat each other. Oh, what a <laughs> spectacular. How wonderful. <laughs> wow, it sounds great. Sign me up. Yeah. Well, Said no one ever. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. 
And on the scale, like I said, again, we just keep playing this human thing like it's separate from the biosphere. The biosphere, which most of the consciousness is, most of the pain is being endured in the biosphere. And mm -hmm. humans are completely oblivious to that truth. They've killed mm -hmm. those children, so to speak. They've sacrificed them to their god uh, mm -hmm. of the DNA molecule. We're mm -hmm. human, they're not, uh, you know. How do you enhance survivability in a system where we're essentially all cannibals in a reptile petting zoo <clears throat> murdering and well, cannibalizing? Well, okay, I, 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 like I said, I don't want to do anything to enhance survivability. I want to enhance the quality of our existence. And, right, uh, right. Yeah. yeah. How, and, and to do that, we, we just look for ways to reduce harm? Yeah. We stop having kids and figure out how to have sex without cucumbers in our asses. Hmm. So then, obviously, you're like an advocate of the pull-out method. Is that the? Uh, uh, I'm I'm an advocate of whatever. I'm an advocate of reasoning and taking responsibility for what you're doing. Where it, it, most people can't in any way justify their own life, let alone justify having the the control and the power to create another what? another human being to take responsibility for the welfare right. of another human being. If they had a retarded kid, do they really think they have any way of fixing it? Hmm. Yeah. What what I'm saying is when you got your dick in a pussy, you know what I'm saying? And you and you're and you're fucking this pussy, do you you, you you're you're a proponent of pulling out Basically, well, whatever. No, I, no, I'm a, I'm a proponent of you. Look, if you're going to do it, you get sterilized, you use the condom, you do whatever you have to do. But yeah, you okay. take responsibility for what you're doing. It's not that hard not to have fucking kids, for Christ's sakes. I mean, this is another one of these people who can't live without drugs or something. No, it's right. really not that fucking hard, fucker. If you don't right. want to have a kid, okay, there's lots of ways to prevent it. There's, uh, you know, not only can you use lubricants that are that, that kill sperm, you can use your yeah. condom, okay? And if you're really going to be saying you're just too sloppy or lazy to take responsibility well then get sterilized fucker mm. what about like okay yeah okay so like with the condoms for example but that's unpopular well, look, among... well, look look the problem of, of reproduction has nothing to do with accidents okay the fucking idiot poor people they're they're creating idiocracy are not having fucking accidents okay so accidents ah. aren't the problem we can see that the rich countries aren't having an accident problem japan isn't having an accident problem is it the right. accidents aren't out of control in Japan, are they? Right. No, they're even having a problem getting people to do it on purpose, let alone right. have an accident. So accidents aren't a subject. Which causes like some se pretty serious economic uh, consequences because you have a, a rapidly aging population that can no well, longer again, support again, the again, GDP. Well, again, 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 yeah, but there's an underlying principle that makes that all go away, and, that, and that it's called the word unsustainability. You can't live on growth, okay? It's retarded. It's a fucking uh. island. You can't do that. You can't populate the entire universe on Earth, okay? Right. You can't <laughs> grow your population forever, Okay, yeah, on yeah. Earth. So it's a stupid argument. You're you're dependent on a unsustainable philosophy of growth. Uh -huh. Okay, well that's unsustainable. You know what that word means? It will drive you to a brick wall. So you're basically right. just saying, I want to crash into a brick wall. Well, what I would do is say, you belong in an insane asylum, and maybe I'll maybe I'll put that over the concentration camp, insane asylum. Oh, or concentration God. camp. Well, I'm just saying it's too stupid, isn't it? Isn't that too yeah. stupid? If somebody's going to defend what they're doing by saying growth is necessary, then I'm going huh. to say you're too retarded to even right. know my language, okay? <laughs> you're just too stupid. Okay, speaking of stupid, I have to talk about this because this segues right into it. And I just want to get like a, uh, a few words from you on it. Parasites, we're parasites. What about the Gaia hypothesis? wherein planet Earth then expels the parasites in some kind of <clears throat> catastrophic there, There's event. no Gaia, there's no other living things that are conscious, there's no other way to manifest it, it's a neurological function, there's no evidence that it exists anywhere else, Gaia is not a living organism. Gaia, Gaia is a hunk of seaweed if anything, okay? The whole <laughs> Gaia monster is just seaweed, all right? Uh, if we're going to make this argument that I'm made out of cells, right? Okay, I mean, there's yeah, levels yeah. Of, of function, right? It, technically, I'm not a living thing, right? My mm -hmm. cells are alive. And this mm -hmm. argument goes back to physics, too, because I would argue 
at, on the real physics level, all there is is the quanta. There's just the moving stuff, the stuff going the speed of light. The matter is a school of fish, okay? So you think about the fish, you think about the school. Well, what mm. is the school of fish? Well, it's the fish, fucker, right? right. The school doesn't move unless the fish move, right? Mm -hmm. if, the, if the school moves, the fish had to swim, didn't they? Okay. Right. So, okay. So we can talk about ourselves and say we're living things. Well, we're not really living things, right? We're colonies we're, of well, living yes, things. Exactly. Okay. Like a, like a so our, 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 we're not really a living thing. Okay. We're just a machine. We're a, we're a machine that's protecting an egg or a sperm, right? In a sense, right? The only living part of us is our spermazoa or the egg. That's the living thing that we are just this funny robot that's carrying around those eggs and that sperm. Um, well, the people like uh, like a Ken Wilbur, an integral whatever, he would contend that, you know, we're, it, it, it's like, ho uh, what, is, what does he refer to it as? It's like hollow, hollow something, wherein we are, we are comprised of ourselves and then Together we com comprise the human race, and then together well, well, with the well, I'm fucking just saying plants that we have a hundred billion neurons for a reason. The theater of consciousness mm. isn't a simple function; it's a complex function. You got to have mm. neurons, and you got to have enough of them. You got to have at least a few hundred thousand of them. Okay, mm. we have one hundred billion of them. Um, but I'm just saying it's a function that requires there to be neurology. There's no reason to think it happens because there's, you know. There's tubes in wood or something. Well, the tubes, are, <laughs> we're, you know, to pretend those are neurons is pretending. That's pretending. That's called pretending. Okay, when people pretend that the planet is conscious, they're pretending. Mm -hmm. I predict something stupid is going to happen. Exactly. Well, that's, the, that's <laughs> you know, I can predict that people will keep being religious, and that's all that is, is religion. Certainly. The wrong uh, answer. Okay, good questions, bad answers. Wrong answer. So, yes. Good initiative, bad judgment. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, right. Fail is yeah. still fail, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, coming on the program, and I want to let everyone know to go to do not god com or do not go com and check <laughs> out In Mendem on YouTube at youtube.com slash I N M. E N D H A M. Uh, in Mendham, thank you very much for coming on the show, Gary. Yeah, it's good seeing you, Ben. And uh, until next time. <laughs> Implying there'll be yes, part two. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Definitely. Okay. Definitely want you to come back. Thanks again. All right. All right. That's it. We're good. <clears throat> Yay. No fail. That was awesome, man. Thank <laughs> you so much. Nothing went wrong, anyway. Uh, yeah, right.